A very good evening and a very warm welcome to this roundup on our television. I'm Savindri Jawadana. We at our television bring you a collection of business highlights. Let's have a look at the headlines for today. Chinese petroleum company Sinopec will commence operations within six weeks. Parliament removes PUCSL chairman. Private creditors should ensure fair burden in debt treatment. G7 leaders stress. News in detail. Foreign Minister Ali Sabri condemned and rejected the statement issued by the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on Sri Lanka recently. The Foreign Minister expressed this to the Canadian High Commissioner Eric Walsh when he was summoned to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs on the 19th of this month. The Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had issued a statement last week condemning the Sri Lankan Armed Forces' action during the country's 30-year civil war. Minister Sabri stated that the political motivated statement divisive and was issued for domestic political consumption in Canada. He said Sri Lanka vehemently rejects this unsubstantiated allegation of genocide relating to the country's almost three decades of terrorist conflict perpetrated by the LTTE. He observes that the inaccurate and provocative allegations in the statement will lead to polarizing Sri Lankans at the particular juncture. He highlights the negative effects of the statement, especially at a time when the government is working towards economic stability, peace and reconciliation for all ethnicities. He emphasized that arbitrary and erroneous use of genocide on Sri Lanka is driven by a small section of politically motivated anti-Sri Lanka elements in the diaspora with the separatist agenda. The minister said that as a long-standing bilateral partner, Sri Lanka would urge the cooperation of the Canadian government and encourage a mutually supportive relationship between the two countries. He urged the Canadian government to constructively engage the community of Sri Lankan heritage in Canada to work towards realizing the common objectives on inclusive development and sustainable peace. The G7 leader said that private creditors of Sri Lanka should ensure fair burden sharing in line with the comparability of treatment principle when providing debt treatments. The group of seven leaders stressed this in a statement following their annual summit in Hiroshima, Japan. The G7 leader said they remain concerned that serious challenges to debt sustainability and undermining the progress towards the sustainable development goals in low- and middle-income countries. The leaders reiterated the urgency of addressing the debt vulnerabilities in these countries. They pledged to fully support the implementation of the common framework for debt treatments beyond the debt service suspension initiative. They also pledged to do it in a predictable, timely, orderly and coordinated manner, providing clarity to participants. The leaders also welcomed the development of climate resilient debt clauses to enhance the safety net for borrowers facing the impact of climate change. The leaders further encouraged more creditors to offer CRDC for loan agreements. They said that in order to enhance debt data accuracy and transparency, official bilateral creditors were invited to join the data sharing exercise for debt data reconciliation. The International Monetary Fund said that there are tentative signs of improvement in Sri Lanka, although the overall macroeconomic and policy environment still remains challenging. The IMF said this in a press statement released after the staff mission visit to Colombo from the 11th to 23rd of this month. The IMF staff mission led by Peter Brewer and Masahiro Nozaki aimed to discuss recent economic developments and implementation of the fund-supported program. The statement said recent macroeconomic and financial sector developments were discussed during the visit. It was also mentioned that inflation moderation, the exchange rate stabilization and the central bank rebuilding reserves buffers are results of strong policy efforts by the government. However, it stressed that the overall macroeconomic and policy environment remains challenging. Performance under the program will be formally assessed in the context of the first review of the extended fund facility arrangement which is expected to be undertaken in September 2023. 
The mission discussed additional fiscal efforts that will be critical to ensure successful revenue mobilization. The emphasis was on achieving timely restructuring agreements with creditors in line with the program targets by the time of the first review. The IMF said ensuring central bank independence, improving governance and protecting the vulnerable are key for Sri Lanka to emerge from the economic crisis. In the meantime, official data shows that net foreign assets of Sri Lanka's commercial banks have turned positive in the first quarter of 2023. By March 2023, net foreign assets of the banking system went up to 80.3 billion rupees and it shows as 245 million US dollars. Measured in rupees, the combined foreign assets of domestic and offshore banking units of Sri Lanka's commercial banks grew. 61.5 billion rupees in February 2023 from a negative 33.1 billion rupees a month ago. By March 2023, net foreign assets were positive by 494.4 billion rupees, indicating that bank dollar deposits were invested abroad on a net basis. Domestic banking units were still negative by 414 billion rupees by March, down from 446 billion rupees in February. Sri Lanka's banks borrowed abroad to lend domestically including through Sri Lanka development bonds over a decade or more. Sri Lanka is now paying back private debt and is also building official foreign reserves. Building official reserves also has the same effect on the domestic economy as repaying foreign debt. Amid the private credit contraction and better management of state energy utilities, Sri Lanka's central bank has also allowed the exchange rate to appreciate strengthening the underlying monetary standard of the country. Stay tuned, we'll be right back after this break. Sponsored by Those who develop negativity I don't want this If you don't allow mistakes, then you really get stressed out. Number one, try not to make a mistake. Welcome back after the break. President Rani Vikramasinghe says that the government is making all the efforts to accelerate the debt restructuring process in order to remove the bankruptcy label of the country before September. The president made this assurance at the opening ceremony of the Aranaik Asupani Alla Water Scheme project, which provides drinking water to 135 Grama Seva divisions in Kegal district. Then, happy Nayavelati in Ratwal. हाँ नायवेला तीन पुद्गलियाँ समागम में का अभी देंग विशेष एम साक्षात्कार करने तो तीन ने एक अम्म अभी पेन्ना नो ने अपे आधे हम वैद्यों ने आकेला अभी लास्ट ही केला आधे हम खुद कर ला दिन ना तीन ये अवस्था वट अविला तीन देंग अभी साक्षात्कार वाले अंत तीनों यार के इन साक्षात्कार करने अपने द नेता नया जीवन का ले वैधी करना होता है मैं प्रश्न सियाल लम आप इतना साक्षात्कार करने तो तीनों आप विदेश नए बार तीन निशा को हम दे विदेश नए सहाने एक गाने आडू कराने ये वाके आप इतना पेन्ना नो ने आप देशीय नए विशाल बार आते हैं ना देशीय नए गुट आप इको हम दे में सहाने एक गाने को हम दे दिखाने एक में साक्षात्कार आवश्यक होना हम अपने टपुलों हम बैंकों लोट बावे नहीं कराने 
मम बलापुरुत्व इन्हें आप इट पुलवांग वे की ऐला जुली अगस्त माह से दी मै वैट काटियो तो आवश्यक करने मै वैट काटियो तो आवश्यक कर ला आप इस सितंबर के इंटे इससे ला आप आओ मै बंकलोत बावें इवात तो इन्ना ते आप इस जाने टा तीन ने आप इस गिविसो में पार्लिमेंट इन सामन्त करा जंग आप इट तीन ने ईलांग का पीवरा गान्ना तीन ईलांग का पीवरा गान्ना मांग हिताने आप योग कम एक टे एक तो ऐला ये वैट काटियो तो कराने पुलवा� in the meantime, the government signed an agreement with Sinopec Petroleum Company in a move to address full supply challenges in the country recently at the Presidential Secretariat. Power and Energy Minister Secretary, MP DUK Mapa Patrino and Sinopec Company Full Production and Marketing Department Managing Director Chen Chen Ming signed the agreement in front of the President. A statement issued by the President's media says that the agreement marks a crucial step in ensuring a steady and uninterrupted fuel supply for the nation. Sinopec, along with its affiliated companies, is set to commence operations in Sri Lanka within 45 days following the issuance of the license. Power and Energy Minister Kanchan Vijayasekar in a tweet said Sinopec will be granted a 20-year license to operate 150 fuel stations currently operated by the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation. He added that the agreement also allows Sinopec to invest in 50 new fuel stations and to invest in Sri Lanka's energy sector. President's media in its statement said this development brings hope for a more stable and reliable fuel supply, boosting the country's energy sector and providing assurance to consumers. One of the key requirements for new retail suppliers entering the market was their ability to secure forex requirements without depending on how the domestic banking sector. It was mandated that these companies make their own funds for fuel procurement through foreign sources, at least during the initial one-year period of operation. Moreover, President Rani Vikramasinghe instructed the immediate establishment of an Agricultural Modernization Secretariat to address issues arising during the Agricultural Modernization Program. The President gave this directive during a discussion held at the Presidential Secretariat in order to formulate policy framework for agriculture modernization recently. The President instructed to appoint secretariats from the President's Office, Ministry of Agriculture, along with the officials of equivalent ranks to serve in the Agricultural Modernization Secretariat. He emphasized the importance of involving the private sector in these activities. The President highlighted that the armed forces are also contributing to the Agricultural Modernization Program. President Vikramasinghe suggested implementing pilot projects in the respective fields involving officials from local government institutions and the private sector and instructed the public sector to support with the necessary guidance and technical support. The President requested a progress report from the officials of the Agricultural Modernization Secretariat by July. Additionally, he advised submitting requests for required land to the Secretariat and propose appropriate solutions. The President stressed the need to modernize all sectors including plantation, industries, fishing, fish production, ornamental flower cultivation, vegetable and fruit production, grain production, milk and egg production. Stay will be right back after this break. State of Business. IBUS AV. Welcome back. 
On to more local news, the motion moved by the government to remove the chairman of the Public Utility Commission of Sri Lanka, Janaka Ratnayaka, was passed by a majority of 46 votes. A total of 123 MPs voted in favour of the motion, while 77 MPs voted against it in Parliament on Wednesday. A majority of the opposition parties in Parliament opposed the government's motion to out the chairman of the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka, Janaka Ratnayaka. The main opposition party, the Samagi Janabalavege, took the lead in voting against his removal, although two MPs from the party voted in favour of the government. The Janata Vimukti Permana, led by National People's Power Party, followed suit and voted against the government's motion. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party MPs also did not support the motion. However, parliamentarian Duminda Sanayaka of the party voted in favour. A SLPP breakaway faction, the Freedom People's Congress, led by Talas Alaha Peruma, also opposed the motion. Yet another SLPP dissident group, the Supreme Lanka Coalition, also joined fellow parties of the opposition to stand against the outing of Ratnaika. Independent MPs Kumara Velgama, Andhra Priyadarshan Yapa, John Senevratna, and the MPs representing Sri Lanka Podujana Perumana voted in favour of the motion. It is also important to notice that MP Ali Sabri Rahim, who was detained by customs for illegal carriage of goods, ended up voting against the motion. Anyhow, just before the debate began, independent MP Professor Charita Herat argued that the Speaker should adhere to the standing order. विधिमत्मा विशेष एम मेक रटे विधायक या व्यवस्था दायक या देखा एक कहूँगे न थैना विधायक के विसिंतमाय में सभापति वर्य आव विवाद कराने योजना कर लती है ने व्यवस्था दायक के तमाय एक अनुमत कर लेतु अती है ने मेक इतना व्यादगत प्रेसिडेंट से का ये तो कोटे मेक करादी आप ही पार्लिमेंट भी आंडुपाक्षय विपक्षय in the meantime, the former Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka chairman, Janaka Ratnayaka, said that the politicians no longer have to face the barrier of making decisions based on data and scientific methodology. Janaka Ratnayaka said this during a special media briefing held at his office immediately after the majority of the parliament voted on dismissing him of his duties as the PUCSL chairman. Mam Hamasta in Balaburtu ne Mahajanta Venuin Mahajan Vita Commissioner Sabahapati Ravashan Swadin Commissioner Sabahapati Ravashan Navashi Katutu Avasha Kare de Kirim Ratamai Esanha Matavasta Avasana Kale de Labunag Hedu Tamai Vishala Deshapan Balapam Nisa, Isapan Adikari, Munawan Nolte, Anu Vadanokar Nisa, Ivagi Mahajanta, Venuin, Penny City Munisa, then may Mavaskiri and Balapuru to win a Mahajana Buddha Commission Swadan and Penatikarla, Yavashi with the Tamanto and with the Amadura, Vidrisa Balasak, Tamadura, Vasha Karate, Katukiri, Balapur to Tamai Tibbe, they cut it to my Tanam Naduna, Haripasu and Ama, who is making Anikus Sama Jacan, Onama Dekate, Tatamata Padanam Venatu, again. किसी में विद्यान कोल बाव एक नहीं हुआ ये आवश्य देवाल ये अमात्य वर्याट वन पिछड़े रहे मैं तो न हेडिंग तो सुधी बेरी मैं अमात्य वर्याट मुले इंदा में वरुण दुनिया ने ये अमात्य वर्याट तमांगी वैदिक कराने तो मगे पास से नहीं आवे ये अमात्य वर्याट मगे पास से नहीं आवे लाउर उद्दत्ते से � इतने सम इतने साहसम बंदे तावे तिबिला हरिदेव करने ने वो टेकर इधर इधर नो देने 
मैं अलग धन्य पीली प्रश्न तीन धन्य पीली मैं प्रश्न एक With that, we'll be signing out for today. See you tomorrow with State of Business at 7:45 p.m. Until then, take care and good night.